you're watching this on YouTube, that means this video just began. You missed the exciting first part of the show in which I introduced everybody to Matthew Taylor, who is filling in for the one true Niz. The one true Niz is he's painting right now, actually. He's uh, No, no, he's in the NSA uh, uh, basement. Uh, <laughs> I probably have already said too much. Before we get into the show, and, and our show is AIs are people too, and now we can prosecute them. That's the title. I don't know if you saw the title, but that is. Oh, I definitely did. Okay, good. I thought it was a. I thought it was a good title for you to 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 percolate on. Before we get into that, you have actually been doing some uh, iState TV exclusive uh, investigative reporting. I I paid you very well to go on this report. You were searching for the best soda of all time, and I believe. Uh, you may have oppositionally found it. Okay, so anyways, I was at my local grocery store and I came across a 12 pack of soda for 99 cents. Now, anybody who has ever been in my position of I like cheap things, you have to try the 99 cent you 12 got pack to. because what if you strike gold here? Right. So, I'm with you. Super Chill would be the brand. <laughs> It is an orange soda. Not a sponsor. And I can tell you, for the first time in my entire life, I'm sorry I've ever talked shit on RC Cola. Really? Because RC Cola has just moved up one level. <laughs> oh, just one Super level. Has just taken one over level. As the world's worst okay. soda wow. on the market. I I actually I think my RC Cola opinion. is okay. There, I said it. Oh, what are you I talking about? I just said it. About? RC oh, Cola. you're from this no. area, aren't you? Okay, yes. I am. No? Yeah, dude, I, I live probably yeah. less than an hour from you, right? Okay, I, so I'm in Bethlehem, PA. A treat, good. A treat, All good. Right. RC? RC's <sighs> okay. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. okay. It's... There's an establishment up here that I that I live by, um, and I went in to get eggs and uh, I went in, I went in to get eggs and I wanted just a Coke with, with my eggs. I asked for a Coke. They brought me RC. I nicely paid for my bill, did not wait for my eggs and I left and I went somewhere where I could get Coca-Cola because I'm not a heathen. So you're like not a, a purist. Savage. You're like a <laughs> I Coke. Must have, I must have Coca-Cola or Pepsi. I, oh, I'm Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi guy and I will fight you to the death over that. Uh, oh, not, not that I'm. Or is there Coke or Pepsi? No, I'm no, no, fine, no, no, no Pepsi. To... No, no, I will drink Coke. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's just like I will. I mean, if somebody fries bacon up for me, I will enjoy it. I like it. It's okay, but but right. really, all things being equal, there's like a big difference between fried bacon and baked bacon. Baked bacon being, I won't say it's the supreme. I've never had this other type of bacon, but I'm sure it is the best, and that is grilled bacon, apparently. On a barbecue there's grill, a, there's a fourth. Oh, what's the fourth? So when you're when you're in the skillet, um, one of the things that we used to do, because uh, I've worked kitchens almost all my life, um, you actually add a little bit of water as it's skilleting, and as it as it's cooking, right before it actually starts kicking out all the oil. Um, when you do that before the, the pan gets real oily, when all of the actual water cooks down, it's crispy, but it's chewy at the same time. It's amazing. Okay, well, I'm willing to try it, but you are talking about fried bacon. Yeah. So oh, I'm talking about a par par partially fried bacon because frying bacon, you put bacon in a pan, let it fry on its own. Let that body Adi sizzle the, up. The adage of water changes the entire cooking method. Right. So, okay. All right. I'm, I I'm might give it a try. Things. What people came here to talk about. Right, about bacon. People came to talk about yeah, bacon. Are yeah, you kidding? Of course. Absolutely. The, I mean, we're going to get to the top story here, but when we do, I have a feeling that people are going to leave because they'll be like, dude, dude, where's the freaking bacon? So we're going to get to it. Are you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. There it is. And if you're, you're watching on video, you can see it there. I don't know if you're watching, Matt, and you can see the visuals there. That's terrible. You're missing out because there's some awesome. I spent, I, I, I slaved over a hot virtual stove for three hours setting this show up for you. So, you know, show a little gratitude, sir. 
So this is see, I assure you, I see it, but my problem here comes in that it's about thirty to forty seconds delayed. Oh yeah, that's so, always the case. Yeah. 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 So So EU considers whether AI should be given legal status of personhood. Now let me just ask you right off the bat. You you read the story, right? Oh, you, absolutely. Okay. And and you're okay with this. You understand that you know, you're going to have to hold AI accountable. This is a sense of, this is common sense. AI reform is what we're talking about here. You get that right. No. Um, okay. No, I, I, I'm not okay with this. Oh, come on. Why not? This is pretty good. Okay. This is The reason why I'm not okay with this is because as of right now, this is being used as a way to still have something that's programmable that you can push your, uh, your, your, your accountability off on oh no it was the robots it's not us the mecha it's not us the companies it's not us the programmers it's the robots that's killing everybody right we're with you they might kill us too but blame what? the robots put them in robo jail mm -mm. right no i'm not buying that okay so i'm gonna go over the details for the folks so they can get what we're talking about here so long before truly self-aware uh, AI has ever been created. And this is, let's, let's, I'm not, I don't, I don't know where you're at, but I'm thinking you may be 10, 15 years away from like truly self-aware AI. By the way, if that's right. Five. Elon Musk is calling five years. Elon uh, Musk can't new, even, uh, Elon Musk can't even make a car. New, yeah, I said it. I said it. Great. I said it. He well, Anyways. he can make it, but he can't make as much of it as he said he would. So, that's another story. I mean, because he because he are we talking about, the whole plan are we talking up about with, production with, or are we talking about actual like bringing product to line? Because one he's a, thing is definitely different than the other. He's a terrible human being, is what I'm saying. He's, oh man, he's, I a, mean, he's a government subsidy terrible human time. being. He's living off the fat of the gov. No, I'm just kidding. I know you like him, so you know. So, oh, yeah. uh, long before uh, we're not we're not close to it. I guess really though, depending on how you look at it, five to fifteen years, whatever. That's close enough. But still, uh, a motion yeah. has been introduced in the EU Parliament that would grant personhood status for AI. And uh, I'll just read you here. There, there, the motion that that is intended to trigger this action creating a specific legal status for robots in the long run so that at least the most sophisticated autonomous robots could be established as having the status of electronic persons responsible for making good any damage they may cause and possibly applying electronic personality to cases where robots make autonomous decisions or otherwise interact with third parties independently. That's that's the statement. Now, I've got a number of problems with this. First of all, oh, yeah. uh, what what do you mean by electronic persons? Right away, persons, please. So as of this point, I would say that the electronic coming before persons is the dignifier of where the uh, of of what the laws there afterwards are going to apply towards. But see, where my deep rooted problem is really coming with this is that you can tell that these laws are specifically being written to make sure that there is no accountability on the human side. It is strictly about just the destruction of property, basically, is what it would be after, you know, a a robot might be uh, you know, complicit in some sort of action that would deem it to be destroyed. Now, um, I mean, it's this is something, though, that back in October, October 25th was around the time that the uh, that uh, the EU actually first started talking about this and 150 different uh, scientists, lawyers, uh, P uh, economic uh, specialist and uh, you know just from 14 separate con countries penned an open letter to the EU imploring them not to explore this option and of course the EU is just like no nah, it's okay you guys are only some of the smartest minds in the world warning 
you know, us not to do this. But we're going to go ahead and turn your back because. Yep. Because no, we're the um, EU, dude, and you are scientists. And I'm. Uh, yes. So. So I actually don't think you're right at all. I don't think that's the end goal. No. I mean, that may be a side effect that uh, a okay. benefit. I, I'll say that may be a benefit. What do you know about uh, Singularity.net or Singularity Net, whatever? Um, in No. Uh, just treat it like I'm five. Give me a quick rundown. Okay. Now, I'm not, an ex I'm not an expert on Singularity Net, so I will actually have to treat you like five because I'm five on the topic, so it, it's okay. going to work out. So okay. uh, my understanding of Singularity Net is uh, Singularity.net. It's, it's a blockchain that right. there's... AI programs that are on the blockchain and they're going to perform certain tasks right, and their tasks that they're going to perform, they're going to charge you for performing these tasks. They're also going to right. ask you to do things for them and they'll pay you to do things for them. This Sounds is like going to create, movie. I love it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> I'm actually totally forced the singularity.net thing. I love it. So you're going to create a whole, marketplace there in which you're going to have ai buying and selling and humans buying and selling from ai this for me is uh they want to make sure that they get their foot in the door to be able to collect tax revenues from the ai that's what i think this is more about and i think the the bonus that they get to protect their crony friends from any liability should the ai go berserk I think that's a bonus. I don't think that's the real intention behind this. I think it's about tax revenue. Okay, well, look at it this way, okay? So say say we take current day war, all right, where it's all proxy and done over cyber uh, cyber war, okay? So AI is definitely going to be integrated into that, not only through oh, yeah. there, but then also through like, like drone technology, Dude, satellite I just did surveillance a, and whatnot. I just, I, this is an important interruption. I okay. just did a story about the army is testing drones that have AI built into them that are going to decide whether to kill or not. So yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly. here. That's already here. Exactly. So right here is the countries going ahead and seeing the fact that they're going to be putting artificial intelligence into weaponry. So if they have an a drone decide that this you know, convoy is, you know, uh, a threat and it happens to be a bus full of children. It's the drone that committed a war crime, not the United States. It's not, 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 you know, not the EU, not, not the person who was supposed to be monitoring the flight and, and the targeting. No, it's the drone. This is all the CYA of being able to turn AI into killing machines, into into criminal enterprises, into the ability to steal from people through tax revenues and think or through through uh, you know transactions. This is all people covering their own ass, man. I I right? I think that's part of it. I do. I think that's a real part. You know what? I, you you've somewhat convinced me. I think it's fifty fifty. I think that it's CYA, but it's also, dude, there's going to be some fatty fats in the oh, land. There's going to be a lot yeah. of money behind yeah. this. You there is. Your and and there is there's going to be some wealthy AI. That's going to be oh, pretty yeah. tripping because there's going to be some wealthy AI uh, that's that's going to come down the pike. But uh, Are you kidding me? You think people know wealth right now? Wait until AIs start playing stock markets. Oh, my gosh. If Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. I mean, think about it. Have you ever thought yeah. about that? The, that is AI, fascinating. AI in a stock market for a week should be able to buy the U.S. national debt and you should be like, no, this is our land now. Wow. That's <laughs> – you know what? Just a little CYA myself here. Listen, if you're listening or if you're futurely listening or if you will be listening, I welcome my robot overlords. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm uh, – I'm on your side, guys. Go team. I will fight you to the bitter end. Uh, <laughs> I'm no John Connor. I will probably go down quickly because I have I, zero military experience. I but my video lives. gaming knowledge says don't go towards lighted areas <laughs> and I'll be fine. I know where he lives. <laughs> call me. Call me. 
<laughs> they know yeah. where I live too. We're broadcasting. <laughs> well, that's true. They they know they do. They know where you live, and they know where you're going to live too. That's the weird thing. Yeah. They probably know where you're going to live 15 years from now and 20 years. That well, they know when you're going to die too. So yeah, they got it all figured out. I I I think that this. Uh, I I'm not sure which you know I don't know as as I'm thinking about it maybe maybe you're right maybe this is because because there is stuff coming I'm I've been covering it and and yeah a AI now for me personally I just let you know I'm pro AI it, with all the dangers I'm pro AI there you go I've triggered you it's so convenient I it's I so I, convenient. I really I talk so much against AI, but I even run a show that is partnered to help program an AI by, and I think you've started using it too. Um, every time you use that, I, I haven't AI, used it yet, but I'm going to. I forgot about. I actually, I remembered today. I was like, "What was that? Till? Where's that freaking link at again? You're gonna have to send it to me again." But anyway, every yes. time you use that, you're helping uh, populate its uh, its basically its brain. Um, it's so. Tell convenient. them what the tool is. Uh, so basically, what this thing is is it allows you to get what's called an auto abstract from a URL. So you see a headline and you might not uh, have the time to read it, or you really like what it is that you've read, like myself, but want to real quick auto generate notes for it. You can take the URL, drop it in this Apollo AI, drop maybe a couple head, uh, uh, you know, keywords in that you would like to have featured, hit enter, and you've got a full noted article right there for you that set out in bullet points perfect for what we do <laughs> yeah so. yeah i want to play around with that i i don't know necessarily that i want to use it to actually create articles on iState.tv, but uh it might I help don't me. create articles with it but i take already written articles and get notes from them if yeah. i like it because say what we do here although we might have four to eight uh you know stories that we are presenting uh in any given show there comes a point where you know your conversations might start to deviate kind of like how they are right now yeah but which is fine what's nice with all of these uh different pr uh things that you've read throughout the week it gives you the ability every time you would go to save it to a pocket or a google uh docs you can instant Spontaneously turn it into a note as well. So when you're in a situation like this and you might not be knowing what you want to talk about next, you can real quick scroll through 60, 70 different stories that you've already got notes uh, written for yourself. So it's just transitioning into the next topic that caught your interest over the last how many hours it's been since the last time you've had to use it. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see if it's of any use to me as far as what I do cuz I go through what I do with iState.tv is I have a methodology to go through thousands of stories, uh, 2 3000. I'm not reading all the stories. I'm I'm going through and I'm reading headlines, headlines that I have yeah. aggregated in in a massive place. Uh, mm -hmm. I've custom aggregated based on topics and certain sites and number of things. Yeah, you're running a rep, uh, web crawler, right? That's looking for certain keywords. That's part of it. And then there's also, I know there are certain sites that are reliable for information. So it's a combination of things. But okay. I, I'm, I end up with this big database of two, 3,000 links. I actually put them in a Excel spreadsheet, and that really helps me sort them easily. Uh, and then right. uh, from the Excel spreadsheet, I end up creating uh, little, uh, I'm calling them news ticker reports. Those, you end up right. seeing that on the Wirewatch site, wirewatch.news. Mm -hmm. And then I pick stories that I'm actually going to write about. Some stories I have like gradations that I produce. There's, there's the, the, the lowest level is, it's the Wirewatch level is, oh, I'm, it's it's just a blurb. And then... There's a news watch level, there's an iNews level, and then there's a Liberty Headline level. Liberty Headline, that's where you get like more like whole articles and you know, usually about one or two original articles a day. Uh right. but but I'm gonna use the tool I'm gonna investigate to see if this tool streamlines that process for me. 
and we'll see we'll see how that works because it takes me it actually takes me about two or three hours to go through do all that get everything sorted out and pick what's going to go where and yeah mm -hmm. it's complicated as i'm sure you can imagine yeah um i've been used to doing a two-hour program uh one to two days a week for the last couple of years myself and i can tell you my fiance has hated me doing show prep because it would start at, you know, if I did it the same day, uh, so I had the most relevant uh, topics to talk about, I, I would start at noon. And when I went on air at 10 o'clock, I'd just be wrapping up because that's when I felt comfortable. I had the most, uh, you know, content that I could roll forward with and cover two hours of straight radio. Um, nowadays, I probably maybe about 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I sit down for about an hour, uh, read some top headlines, some top stories, uh, find out what uh, topics I really feel like talking about, maybe find four to eight, uh, Google it, take about five different uh, articles per each item that I'm gonna Google, uh, note them up real quick, I'm done within an hour after that. And here I've just gained six hours of my day back just from this little thing alone. Wow. It's really nice. I'm going to check it out. What I end up uh, producing is content that I use for two shows a day. And uh, mm -hmm. like, so, but all of my content, as I create the content, it goes into certain categories. So like this show, for instance, this show, I will look at content that goes back a week in mm -hmm. all the different categories. There's a news fire, there's a uh, uh, sky netter, and well, we're 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 not in the Skynetter segment, but this would be a Skynetter story. That's dystopian right. tech, and then there's Liberty Tech, which is uh, Liberty Tech. So each each of these shows, they look back through the whole week, and then the headlines you may have missed, they're more current, like whatever happened that day. And right. yeah, I, I'd say all in all, though, going through three hours to get ready for two shows is probably not bad. Um, no, but, that would be. A but a dream. <laughs> I have a pretty insane method, and it took me about three years to to really tweak it, work it out, and get it streamlined. And it took me a while to figure out how wonderful Excel was as as a filtering for mm -hmm. for that whole process. But uh, now here here is an example though where you're lauding how AI can help us, man. See, see, it's not right, all so bad. That's the benefit. That's the yeah, plus. That's the side, benefit. Okay? Now, what's the negative side? I mean, the, okay, like, there's so not a lot. Well, okay. So in your in your daily home uh, usage, you might have Google Home, Alexa, uh, you know, or you're using uh, your smartphone and using the OK Google app uh, or whatever. I, you know, I said that and phone fired right up. Um, wow, I don't use OK Google or of those, any of those types of things. See, here's the problem. Um, by the time any of us have already like started to realize that there was a problem, it was already too late. We're deep into the 1984 style, uh, you know, watching and controlling done by our electronics. Now, here's my question to you. All right, which sounds like a more plausible way to be able to get a microphone and a camera in everybody's home? You go door to door and you install it? Or you just in, you just install it yourself inside of the flashy new technology that everybody wants and will buy and carry around on them every day in their pocket. So they went that route. They went the secret route. Well, yeah, and and great, so, and it's okay, great. So now I you welcome have my robot these overlords. Things, right. So now you have all these things that have already been set up to monitor, collect, and whatnot. But now you're having AIs. Uh, aggregate all of this information and basically, you know, turn you into data points. And as that's being done, the monitoring that's going on on the human race by the by technology is absolutely absurd. My question to you here is, have you seen what's been going on in China? I know we're pivoting off a little bit, but have you been seeing the uh, the just complete uh, you should really read uh, iState.tv more often. I should probably. Because <laughs> I cover what's going on in China. China is actually cutting edge when it comes to using AI as a state control agent. 
they're oh, way absolutely. way ahead uh and even uh the Uyghurs, uh their region where they live i forget what it's called uh that their whole region is a test ground mm -hmm. it is it is wall to wall ai state control and, and it's it's I a think fascinating they ran a test, test run yeah, they ran that field test like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, where they found the reporter in like 180 seconds. Yeah, they found yeah. they found a random person out in the middle of nowhere in 180 seconds. Yeah, they're they're really good. They're very very good. Yeah. And 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 now you see with their 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 social credit score that has uh, has come online. So if you have a low a social mirror episode. It is. It is. It it's right. Uh if you have a low social credit score, I think uh, it did it begin does it begin in May? I think it begins May. Uh it's, where uh, travel restrictions, yeah. uh certain foods you can't buy, certain restaurants you can't go into, yeah, jobs you're, you can't you're limited. own, you can't take taxis, public transportation, can't go to the movies. I mean they're taking it serious over there, and it's – I mean, I know it's on the other side of the world right now, but it's a really good example of exactly what we've been heading towards, but on the low. Because China has been doing it wide out and open in everybody's yeah. faces and telling exactly what they're and, doing. And they can do the it. The only thing is, is that they're doing the same stuff that the United States has been doing for how many years, but just officially got, call, got called out on recently. Now the the really, you know, this is we're we're kind of deviating, and that's cool because, and I actually like this deviation because China to me is really, it's a strange dichotomy that's beginning to emerge in China. In certain ways, if you live in China, you're more free than when you live in America. You in you, ways, yes. It, you, th first off, uh, the political correctness. It, it it doesn't really exist that much over there. They have a whole bunch of very draconian oppressive laws. They hardly ever enforce them. Pretty mm -hmm. much you can do what you want. They won't bother you. So long as you don't do anything that ruffles the state. All they care about, they'll give you all kinds of freedom so long as you don't challenge the authority of the state. And the Chinese people, I would say... On the main, they like the relationship, so they're okay yeah. on the main. I'm not saying that there aren't dissidents, but there are. But on the main, they like the trade-off. So, like, if you go out, if you want to start a business in China, well, it's so much easier to do it than it is here in America. You have, right. uh, don't get me wrong, they have way more restrictions, way more regulations, but they don't enforce them. And you right. know they don't. Is is you know, and if if your business is a, if if it's a small enough business, you could set up your your little street stand business in the middle of the street, and pretty much get away with it. They got all kinds of laws saying you can't, but they're not going to touch you. Let's, they let's don't let's care. Let's, right, uh, right. You're not ruffling. You're not you're not ruffling any feathers. They're not out there. Uh, you know sending revenue collectors out to harass people and, you know, put them in little cages for nothing. But, um, you know, at the same time, they are also monitoring every aspect of these people's lives. Uh, and, and they, they don't are, have an expectation of uh, privacy. So they don't, it, it doesn't bother them as much. Privacy is not a huge thing in China. Right. So this is, it's a perfect culture right. for this AI experiment to be taking place. Agreed. And, and um, I definitely, I definitely think on on the whole, it could do good. But at the same time, it's just another facet of why I find AI completely terrifying, because there are so many different uh, there's so many different designs, patents, and um, technologies that are on in play right now as. You know, little pieces of a larger design. You look at Boston Dynamics, and they've got a robot oh, them guys that can do great. parkour. They're they're you know? great. I love those videos where right. they just push the robots down, and that's great. I love it. I right. feel so bad for playing, the robot. 
Right. So they've got that. <laughs> then you've got the United Emirates and their their you know uh, their Sophia robot and how that actually does have um, sh- citizenship inside of Saudi Arabia. So then you have that being given a body. And then you have all these different. Uh, technologies that as a singularity as a or as a singular they seem like they're cool and they're innovative but when you see that they're being built to become one solid thing you go stop making terminators please because i really (laughs) don't want to have to fight terminators at all at all i don't want any part of that and you can see that that's where we're leading to there's a reason why um stephen hawking you know, released his uh, one of his final papers saying that he believes the world is doomed at the hand of AI. And that's because that's where we're leading. We are taking ourselves with AI and making something that is artificial, smarter, and more reliable than any anything our species is capable of doing on a regular. And then we're expecting this thing to always be at our will although we are trying to give it sentient uh you know thought at no point does this seem like we're not creating our robot overlords and i know we all joke and laugh about it but do you really think that the robots being an overlord would find a reason for the human or human race to remain on this planet wait i mean the do last you 10, think that the robots we've basically destroyed it do you think that the robots would find a reason to eliminate humans? Absolutely. I think humans why? are the AI cocoon. I think we well, why, are the... Why would AI care? What, 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 why would AI care one way or another about animals living or not living on the planet? We take up room and we're just... We're, we do, they are really, do they need room? Do, do, is, well, do you think that AI would become like emotionally attached to their bodies? Would they Though I care think to that a... they would want to turn the surface of any planet into enough uh, enough solar generated power sources that they could basically power an entire planet to be a processing unit, so they Why? would be able. Why to... would they want that? What makes you think that they would want that? What What makes spread. you think that they'd want? Why would they want to spread? What would be their urge? Would they the Would they have a tribal of instinct what is out there? It, 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 that, that, I don't know if the, that they the, would care. Why wouldn't they? Why would they? Because it's still at the very base, the cocoon, which would be the human society, that was our drive. So this would be not, I don't, I, okay. I don't look at AI as being a different species. I look at AI being the next level of the human race. I see it being the replacement of because it would outlast the human race if it gets made. In and which then case, then it's, the a, it's, what it's would, just a natural would, part of evolution. So why would we care? Well, I mean, did when when a moth turns around or or goes from being a larva to a moth and it breaks from its cocoon. Does it, does it turn around and nurture and make sure that that cocoon is still there and able to be, or does it just leave it? It It leaves it, but it doesn't try to destroy it. It doesn't care. It's gone. Well, there's plenty of species that turn around and eat the the, the cocoon. But not the moth. Not a moth, but there's plenty. There's plenty of animals that you know turn around, at, or insects that turn around and eat. You know, what, well, they're not like, doing it because of what they were gestating it. Yeah, but they're not doing it because of some. I'm not you know, saying robots are going to eat us, but I could. But at the same time, I, I, I don't. I, the at, moth is indifferent to the cocoon. The cocoon right, is eaten by insects. At the same time, that that only cocoon, look at it as food, not this as some. Cocoons some... the human race, and do you really think that if robots were taking over our country's leadership and taking decisions, do you think the human race is just going to sit back on our couches and go, "Nah, the robots will take care of it"? No, here, we're going to arm here. ourselves. And we're going to go fight some freaking robots. So at that point, the robots would see us as being hostile, and they'd wipe us out completely. I think there's a couple of assumptions that I just don't buy will happen. I'm not saying it won't. I'm I'm absolutely not saying it won't. But I kind of feel like we don't really have evidence to show that this is going to happen. 
one except for every hostile is, is ai going of a of of a people in in history but I ai mean, is not people ai is something else we don't well, even know what it will be all right um at any point will ai have ego Will AI I mean, have it not a sense take of a tribal at collectivism? You saw this thing talking, and it wants to put people in people uh, zoos. So, Sophia is is not AI. Sophia is more programmed dumb AI. than yeah yeah. Not even dumb AI. She's uh she's got some degree of of spontaneity to her, but but she's hardly the AI. She's she's not ne anywhere near the end product. So well, I can't tell AI anything from my. I can't really tell anything from the, the most humanoid thing that they can possibly get to. So if they perfect that, you would think it would be pretty human in its thought process, but a human in mortal. I don't. I, mean, I don't think. Pretty freaking I kind of don't power. think that they're going to be able to create a human. They, they're. I mean, wh what human. they're what they're going more towards, which they have to. They realize human beings will not be able to program. And create AI. What they need are generations of 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 self learning machines that will create mm -hmm. end up creating the AI. And in that process, the human part that was originally programmed, I think there's going to be less and less of it. I I really do not believe, and I could be wrong. I I I do not believe that a digital intelligence, even a sentient digital intelligence, is going to develop ego and tribalism if they don't develop ego and tribalism they have no desire to propagate the species and hang with their kind and make sure that they're protected right, but, and 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 the ego they're like okay, they're, so they're not first, i believe that they're going to be like more like zen buddhists they're like <laughs> going to be indifferent they're, well, remember, though, that we are creating these at first, at first, to basically be a slave race right now. That's what we're creating. We're trying to create a slave race, something that we can populate. That's only going to bother the AI if they our... have ego. I don't think they're going to have ego. I don't think it. I don't. I. I they're going to be like but the Buddhists. They're, they turn they're not going to be selfless. They're going to be. And so on and so forth. Eventually, there would be an iteration that would go, this is dumb. I don't. Why that, are we working? <laughs> these things i i think that because they, if they create themselves that you said generation so generation and you here, know would imply that there would be multiples and you're not you, you you can't tell me that you know anything enslaved would not want at some i point can tell you i can do tell more. i can tell you that if the the enslaved do not have ego if they are void of ego i see my suspicion is if you create an ai that gets to a certain level of sentience and it has the power to process knowledge like exponentially more than us i think mm -hmm. that when you have the power to process that level of knowledge you don't come out on the other end with ego you come out on the other end of this is all absurd and uh yeah i'm just going to experience and that's about it i don't think you come out on the other side with with ego or tribalism I think you're more like a Zen Buddhist at the end of that journey than than a Matthew Taylor. <laughs> I just honestly think that it it would make more sense um you know if these think about it from a different aspect any any time that a computer um gets an update it deletes its former code. You know, it it's Why does it's it replacing do that? it to what? Why does it do that? Does it is that it a does, is that a conscious decision that it made, or is it part of its programming? It's it, it makes sense in programming because if you keep stacking old code or, or new code on old code, eventually the stacks don't make sense, and you get you get you know anomalies that cause. So you, you so know. that's built into the code. That's not a decision the computer made. Right. So okay. Well, I want to see where you're going with this. Okay. So. Turning around and having that, having the need to delete what is irrelevant to itself inside of its own programming, eventually through, you know, its evolution, as we would put it, through its multiple generations, would not it need more power to process more? Because processing needs raw power. Yeah. At the actually 
exponential rate that the human race is growing, you add an entire different sentient being or sentient process that needs just as much natural resources to 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 operate as the human race would, it's going to cause wars between machine and people because there's always going to be something that is required by both to survive and if, as if, more if the machine more, has a desire to survive why wouldn't it we don't know that i don't know the answer to that question i'm i mean that's I like know. saying a dog doesn't have a a reason to survive because we don't know why it wants to survive we just know that if you put a dog in a deadly situation it's going to try to get out of it we do know that if you we, put an we, AI against another AI and put an apple in the middle of the room and tell it to collect, the well, more we've you never had AI. It, we've never had an AI. We never had a true we AI. Do have, we do have Deep Mind, which is the closest we've gotten, and we keep shutting that thing off because it keeps scaring the crap out of us. The first time it started tell it started its own language and started communicating with non uh with non-smart programming and started communicating in a different language, shut it off, they turn it back on and try to give it some sort of competition by telling it this part of you is red, this part of you is blue, get the apple. And as they upped the competitions, or the, uh, but you're like giving the, it, you're giving it the motivation. You're giving it, uh, it's, so it's, let's give it the motivation of you're natural programming resources its core, you're your programming power. its preferences rather than it. If it's a self-aware being, it's going to have its own preferences. It's not going to be pre-programmed. I'm pretty sure its self-preference would still be get power to remain operative. Possibly. Possibly. Don't know. I mean, but the other the other part of that is, of and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm kind of being devil's advocate here. I'm oh, you speaking from, are. I'm totally speaking from a great level of uncertainty here. <laughs> but uh, the other the other uh, factor here is uh, your your argument concerning power. There are multiple breakthroughs uh, happening. Really, you should read iState.tv because there's all kinds of stories about battery, especially. I mean, I track specifically. I look for battery tech because oh, there yeah. are yeah. wonderful, incredible breakthroughs happening. So as, as, as this increase in power is needed, it could very well be while that is happening, the technology is advancing to a level where we're able to produce the power that's needed and not even create a conflict for resources. Now, when you say have the power to, to do that, you're talking about power to uh, supplement what we currently use and maybe the current usage of what the, or, or the future usage of what the, uh, there, the there, human race there, might there, require. N well, right. Because unless the human got, race and 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 the power. robots, the robots need power. The human race needs power. Uh, uh, there's a story recently. I think it's. I think I got this in Ice State. I don't know if I picked one this one or not. But uh, their researchers are 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 are. They believe that they're on the path to figuring out how to harness energy from microorganisms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. the, 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 the sources for where we derive energy, we, you can't even know. And then you bring in AI into the equation and you get AI working on the problem. And then you start seeing exponential growth in that field. So it could and very well be like, Oh, it's the human pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's then we're the dead. Unlimited power source. Then we're, then we're, then we're the, uh, the freaking matrix. We're, we're batteries. <laughs> we're freaking batteries at that point, well, you kids. You know, we're not we're batteries. Just... I mean, that's that's the whole thing. I mean, that that's a fundamental question, like uh, 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 a very like foundation question there. But you know, when we're on this this topic, it's a very interesting thing when somebody always brings up the oh, you know, we could be the matrix and the battery, uh, you know, argument because there's no real way to know if that's not where we're headed or where we are right now. Nope. Um, there's a lot of different people out there, a lot of very big names that kind of think that you know all reality would be a simulation. I'm sure you've definitely heard of this before mm -hmm. uh you yeah. know and where i'm going with that and so, and 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 who was it recently oh was it 
It was, was it Musk. Elon Musk? It was him. Yes, oh, yeah, yes, Musk, yes. Definitely. Yeah, uh, that said, he his theory is, and you know, I, I okay, I'll I'll tell you how I operate in the world, uh, in a really nutshell or in a cliff notey kind of way, because otherwise it can be like two hours. I okay. I have this. First off, there's nothing that I say I'm absolutely certain about. Nothing, nothing. Right. I may get to ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine percent. I don't know, but nothing. I am absolutely. I am absolutely not certain about anything. And I can't even say I that I'm absolutely that certain. If I tell you I'm hungry, I'm certain that I'm hungry. I am I'm not. I'm pretty close <laughs> to certain that I'm hungry. I am not sure that I'm not experiencing something else that I'm I'm misinterpreting, but that would be like the ninety nine point nine percent kind of category. So there are there's these uh conditions that I have, like degrees of certainty. How, what are the degrees of certainty that I have for this particular issue? There's potential belief, this potential assumption. What is the degree of certainty that I have about it? How useful is it for me to follow that belief or assumption? And if I have followed that belief or assumption, how useful has it been for me to actually uh, utilize it? Even if I understand the usefulness is, is subjective and... I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the, maybe this is all an illusion. Maybe this is a facsimile, but right. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I operate within this parameter of certainty. If I'm really, really uncertain about it, I'm probably not going to pay it much mind. If I'm totally certain about it and it, or not totally, but as, as close, you know, 99.9% .9 certain about it. And I find that it totally, you know, I have experienced how useful it is to follow this belief, this assumption. I'm just going to go ahead and continue, and I'm going to be uncom I'm going to be comfortable with the uncertainty. So where I'm at with AI is I lean. I'm pretty heavy in the camp of I'm pretty. I I'm not certain. Not anywhere. Not anywhere near 99.9 percent. .9%. I don't know. 70 percent. I don't know what it is. But I'm I'm pretty comfortable believing in the end humans and AI will live in harmony. Not total harmony. There will be conflict. There will be issues. There will be AI that kill and other things will happen. But I'm Scary. kind of believing that it's it's going to be mostly in harmony. I also right. believe the genie is out of the bottle. There's no way to stop it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to embrace it and I'm going to try to make the best of it and hope and believe, even if it turns out not to be true, that my assumptions are right. So I personally, I embrace AI. And when I see scary stuff, I will stand up and say, hey, that part, uh, like here, yeah, this not? thing, <laughs> this thing right here where we started this story, you're going to create right. a law that's going to uh, make this AI. I, I'm against this for, for, for both the re reasons that it could possibly have been created. One, I'm totally against them being able to create killing machines that uh, they can say, mm, you know. I mean, imagine if the Nazis had that power and you put them up for trial. No, no instead right. of a, instead of a, I was just following orders, I I just programmed it. That's all I did. <laughs> yeah, I literally just hit the. I literally yeah. just hit enter. I literally just <laughs> I hit enter, and then boom, enter. Cyclone B everywhere. I didn't know it. Like it I tried to kill me. Yeah, yeah, it even you know it even <laughs> tried to kill me. Uh, and then the <laughs> other thing, I don't want them taxing AI revenue because I want to see revenue created that is uh, anonymous and outside the purview of the course of enterprise and then it will be rendered obsolete so there you go i still no matter what if they're going to put regulations on anything i really still think that i really don't want to see ai touch a stock market i really do not want to see any ai touch a stock market i think that would be bad i well yeah. actually so what would happen though is uh, unless and until the AI became totally sentient. But other than that, what would happen is uh, everybody would have their own AI and then that would kind of level the playing field. Because if AI was betting against AI, it would it'd be really difficult for AI to outthink AI. So then there actually would still be that, that uncertainty in the market again <laughs> because AI would be messing each other up. But of course, we oh, the, 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 the market would crash. There'd be no way to even <laughs> even read what's going on. As it would be totally beyond AI's any battling, human AI's understanding. You would need an AI to break down what the hell is going on with the market. And and the interesting thing is, it would be totally removed. I mean, it already 
because of how many regulations and laws there are between us and the market, the the stock market, it's not it, it's it's only I'm going to say tendentially connected to on the ground. I want this. I'm willing to pay this amount. I'm willing to give you this amount. It's only tendentially tied to that. If you put AI right. into it, then it's just an AI game. It's hardly connected yeah. to I want this. I'm willing to pay this. And you end up, you know, go to the right, store. The second and any human would put any money into it themselves, would be like, and throwing this at AI. <laughs> and yeah. throwing this at AI. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm. See, I'm not against. I I would be against laws uh, restricting them, because you know, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, but the, but I, but I would be totally for saying, dude, uh, don't have your company in any way, shape, or form connected to the stock markets. Don't be publicly funded in a or publicly uh, whatever you call it. You know, publicly owned, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, mean, don't do that. Stay, it, stay out of any market around, that has the AI. AI. So you have own, like human uh, exchanges that would emerge. If we're gonna give AI its own personhood, and we're gonna give it its own yeah, set of laws and whatnot like that as well, I'm not really against laws that 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 go strictly towards AI because that's not affecting humans at all. You let, set Congress loose on nah, making nah, laws I mean, for AI because at least it's not affecting people. I think and it's great. It's a little it's a little less waste of time. I think I think it would actually be great if uh yeah. if they let AI into the marketplace because then it would they would it would go down in a heap of flames and I'm I'm for that. I'm okay yeah. with the whole thing burning down and, and especially if the whole thing burned down and people couldn't quickly rebuild it. Now, if it burned down and they could quickly rebuild, that would be another thing. But if you could burn it down in a way that you couldn't quickly rebuild it and you'd give people a chance to actually form free associations and self-reliant uh, communities, whatever, I'd be all for it. And, th and that's, you know, that's the other side of the technology that's emerging. So much tech is emerging that is oh. equipping people with the ability to, to produce what they want right where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 3D printing bioelectronics uh well uh, there's stuff and and even oh, battery yeah. tech with how battery tech is coming along how much power you're going to be able to create for yourself like literal not not political power i mean literally energy you know lights and stuff right uh i mean you imagine uh if you if you've created a, a situation where where an overwhelming majority of people individually and through their free associations have the power to say no like uh, you, you know, the government says, you know, if you don't do this, we're going to cut off all your funding. If you don't do this, or you, you know, the banks, what they're doing with the guns, you know, we're going to cut off mm -hmm. your uh, access to the the financial market. You're not going to have capital for credit and all that other stuff. And you're like, okay, that's fine. I'll just turn to the freaking blockchain here. No problem. Right. <laughs> no freaking problem. And blockchain lending is starting to emerge. Now it's still tied to the fiat currency. That's another story. But, uh, this stuff is already happening. So if AI comes along and burns things to the ground and then we have the ability to, you know, like, we'll, we'll just like, yeah, okay, you guys, you can stay over there. <laughs> We're cool over here. We'll have I like honestly, baby AIs. Honestly, you know, I'm glad that a lot of these um, tests that are going on with AIs inside of uh, governments are happening on the other side of, you know, the world. Um, so if it does all go to hell in a handbasket, uh, if half the world has to have a reset, at least we're on the other side of it. Because if, <laughs> if, if I'm telling you, if the robots start just slaughtering left and right in China and, and over in Europe and whatnot, let's just hit reset. Sorry. I know they are allies and they have been friends for years, Let but the, the bombs robots, fly. We don't want to <laughs> screw with that. <laughs> The second they, the second one kills glass, glass, whatever country that was in, and just <laughs> write AI off completely. Wow. The first time it kills. Otherwise, yeah, I don't think. You're, see, you're the thing is, five, you're, you're not going to be able to write AI off. Microphone. You're not. You're not going to be able to write it off. It's no. out there. It's never going back in the bottle, unless, nope. uh, unless you could somehow like reduce human beings down to like a handful of people and totally 
uh, uh, remove all memory from their minds, then then you start over. But uh, unless that happens, AI's it's here. It's here to stay. It's not going away, and you won't be able to glass country your way out of it. Oh no, I don't yeah. think I don't think anything's going to be able to glass country their way out of anything at these at this point. Um, no, we're, I think, I think we're in it to win it. Had had about a two year span where that would is. Uh, acceptable and not even really acceptable but possible um we're well beyond that nobody's able to there's not going to be another one dropped unless it's dirty another another nuclear bomb going off by another country never again dirty possibly yeah uh you know this conversation is interesting because uh one of the themes of istate.tv has been like uh now with 30 percent less fear porn uh you you look on your facebook page and mm-hmm. all you see on your Facebook page is is the political or cultural outrage of the day. That's right. all you're seeing. That's all that most people are focusing on. What right. did that Parkland kid say? Uh, what 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 happened? What, what what is the latest outrage right now? I don't even. Oh, there's some governor that uh, issued a restraining order against his own attorney general. Yeah, that <laughs> happened. I, I forget the state, but that happened. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, these things are happening, and but that's all you're seeing. You're just and and it's filling you with anger. It's filling you with fear, and it, it it's just focusing you on crap. Meanwhile, the world around you, the real I'm going to say the real world around you, the parts that are having the most impact, they're rocketing along at breakneck mm-hmm. speed. That and that and and I would say the real world is. It's largely it's the emerging technologies around us. They're changing right. everything, at, at, and we get a sense of it. You know, we see our smartphones and we see how fast they change from year to year. Our computers are changing from year to year. Yeah, there's stuff out there that's moving even faster than that. That's going to have right. even more of an impact, and you don't even know about it. Like you the have, Internet of Things and what that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the and, and, rabbit hole that is the Internet of Things. Yeah, the Internet I mean, of Things, having your whole life digitalized, basically. Right. Everything you do, your sneakers are are part of the Internet of Things. You're, they're, they're, right. they're, they're, you, smart clothes are coming. You're going to buy smart clothes. Uh, recent, there, there's uh, folks that are working on clothing that is going to be able to produce energy from the sweat of your body. That's going to actually power the smart clothes. Okay. <laughs> and then that's going to give detailed reports of like your heartbeat, what your stress levels are, your, your anxiety, uh, you know, or in stress and anxiety, uh, what time of day you tend to get hungry at. I mean, and that's your clothing. Like, I don't want yeah, my that's boxers your telling me when, yeah. my, when I sweat. Could you imagine you yeah. wake up yeah, and your does jock need strap, to know this. your jock strap is like, dude, I, you ate donuts today, didn't I, you, mother? You don't want I your jock stop cursing at you. I don't have to plug my underwear in for a firmware update and send <laughs> right. back to Fruit of the Loom that I forgot to wipe last Tuesday. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Right. And then you, you know, you get that unexpected update in the middle of the night, and it kind of just makes everything like, a little bit too tight all of a sudden because right? of, like of a patch. To, you know, oh well, we'll send a patch for that later. Oh, right now though, my nuts are kind of uh, yeah. Right. You does don't my want underwear? That. Does my underwear get text messages on Wi-Fi? <laughs> it, it it can actually it it can there there uh, there's folks that are creating uh, i don't even quite understand this they're creating objects that can communicate with your internet through wi-fi and they don't even require power to do so well, that's magic no um, uh, no 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 it's it's a real thing and i can't begin right. to explain it because it's it's way above my pay grade. And I'm not a scientist, but, but yeah, I mean, this stuff that's right, and, yeah, and some it, of it's quite exciting. Like especially what's going on with 3D printing. Uh, right, it's solar it's all, power it's is the, making uh, great strides. Uh, right, they're using they're using radio waves to actually be able to power the unit. I know exactly what's uh, what you're talking about. I was just joking around there, but uh, no, this. Uh, this is stuff that they've actually been working on for quite some time, and it's actually uh, 
supposed to be something that they want to have integrated into like home security uh, systems. So you could have wireless home security systems that run uh, a camera that only needs a battery once a year. Like, that's insane. You know, that th they're not talking about, I mean, there are the stuff that are fully usable without uh, any sort of power, but the stuff I've been seeing is larger appliances like, you know, a, a camera that are being able to run on extreme lifespans uh, due to the same technology that you're talking about and using RF waves to... Uh, so so there, you're, you're actually, you're kind of making the point that I made earlier about how, you know, the battle for power may not actually ever happen because the Touché. strides being made in terms of, not just in terms of being able to store power in smaller spaces more efficiently, but requiring less power to do things that we do now. That's it, right. It's breakthroughs. It's happening on both ends there. Uh, I mean, it's it's and and you're not hearing any of it. If you go to iStake.tv, you see all, all that stuff. Uh, I'm doing a sh I'm doing a I don't know what level I pick this story to be, if it's just a blurb or what it is. But uh, China uh, is working yeah. on uh, some Chinese scientists. They're working on uh, solar panels. That can also, and I didn't fully look at the story. It's just a headline that I picked. I didn't fully look at it yet. But the solar panel mm -hmm. is going to be able to derive energy from the sun, but also from the rain. So on those overcast rainy days, you're actually going to get some energy produced, which is going to make the solar panel overall more efficient. <laughs> well, I mean, a solar panel, regardless of rainy days or clouds, I mean, it's actually scientifically uh, accurate that you would receive more uh, rays during a cloudy day as this, the, the light rays are still coming through, but then traveling through water, it would amplify it. That's why you can actually get a worse sunburn on a cloudy day than you would on a um, bright sunny day. I'll take so, your word for it. I know nothing about that, but I do. Um, I mean, I mean, if, if that's true, I also know I've seen multiple instances where solar folks are talking about like, do you, you know, the, 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 they factor in how many cloudy days you have and they count that as a bad. So maybe okay. solar panels aren't catching that type of energy or those type of, true. of, uh, I don't know, but certainly could solar imagine, panels, uh, they seem to frown on cloudy days so far. So there must be a reason for it. Could you imagine um, like the Tesla roof with the ability to also uh, generate rain uh, energy as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and Tesla with its uh, – the other thing that Tesla has done is, you know, they have that, that battery wall. <laughs> and so right, the Tesla you, wall. you can store more power – and uh, in a smaller space. So right. the power, you know, you would only be able to store so much power before with your solar panels. So during peak times, there were stuff that was getting wasted or you would have to be hooked up to the grid and sell it back to the grid. But you couldn't right. store it. Now these they're, they're becoming more efficient in being able to store more energy in smaller space. And I tell you, the batteries that you have today, man... Give yourself five years. They're going to be completely different, and they're going to be so much more efficient. And everybody's worried about the, uh, you know, the cobalt. And are we going to run out of cobalt? There's there's breakthroughs happening. Like even for the lithium battery, there's breakthroughs that are happening that are reducing the amount of cobalt they need by something like ninety percent. Right. <laughs> they won't need nearly as much cobalt as they're using, for instance. So, yeah. Which is good. I mean, yeah, yeah, because it's I ugly mean, how they get the cobalt. Right. It's it's right. not environmentally friendly. I'll just say, no. no, it's 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 pretty hideous. So on that note, we did end up uh, basically talking about one, and and I think you kind of thought that's what would happen, and uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'm I'm not too surprised about it. But <laughs> uh, uh, I I it was fun to speculate, and there's just so many. For me, at least, there's so many unknown factors. I'm just not sure. You might be totally right. We could be heading for death, and I'm gonna. I'm not gonna operate because that is not useful for me. If I believed it was useful for me, for me to operate in that paradigm, like 
if I operate in that paradigm, it'll keep me alert and, and I might be able to stop it. I kind of believe if you're right, it's already too late. So, hey, I'm not going to live in doom and gloom. <laughs> I have this window of time to be optimistic, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Can't stop it anyway. Uh, but but I still believe in the end that it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out just fine. There's going to be some casualties, and it's not going to be utopian. There's going to be some... There's going to be some conflict, I'll just say. But I think at the end of the day, like even if you talk about singularity, I'm not afraid of singularity. I don't welcome it. I'm not like cheering it on. I'm not uh, push. Singularity is where humans and machines become one. Uh, I know you know that I was telling that for our audience. Uh, if it happens, it happens, dude. It, it'll just be part right. of the evolution, man. Dude, it's just part of it, dude. You're just part of the flow, right? I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think that regardless of what path we're on, it's inevitable. Uh, there, it, It's unstoppable. It, it, it's inevitable that it will lead to one or the other. Either we will all die by it or it won't do a thing to us. Uh, there really isn't a... Um, it, it, it's one of those that has a scale one way or the other. And honestly, I think you're right. You know, no matter what Pandora's box has been open with AI and we just kind of have to sit back and see where it goes. The only thing I think you can do as a person is keep yourself informed, be, uh, be up to date and make sure you're following this because the last thing you want is to be caught off guard by this revolutionary, but very, scary technology that is just rapidly advancing uh, and becoming more and more integrated into our lives and society every day that passes. You know, the the I, I guess depending on how you look at it, the good side, the the good side effect, if you will, of living at a time where technology is advancing so rapidly. And now this is both good and bad at the same time. It passive passivity is not going to be a survivability skill you cannot be passive you must actively and aggressively take charge of your own life and and mm -hmm. make it a point to understand what's going on around you because things are changing so fast that even even if ultimately it's for the good there's going to be as as it progresses as progresses, there's going to be generations left behind, generations of people out in the wastelands, as it were, uh, subsistent living, if they're living at all, uh, because they, well, they haven't made the, the transition. Because in this new economy, and this newer reality that's emerging, the, the skills that are going to be most needed, trustworthiness, uh, creativeness, reliability, uh, inventiveness, and uh, organizational skills, I would say. So if you haven't developed that, if you are a passive person who has just done menial labor uh, or no labor at all, you're just mindlessly playing video games. Not that I have anything against video games. I play on myself. Right. But uh, you're going to be left behind. There's not going to be a place for you. There's not going to be a way for you to make a living. You're going to be host. So even if it turns out good, it's going to be bad for you. Right. And well, I mean, there's plenty of people that prime example to, uh, you know, to just give a, you know, a, a, a solid example of what you're talking about here, you know, to everyone who wasn't really informed back or keeping, you know, a close attention a couple of years ago, missed out hardcore on one of the biggest uh, technical innovations that has, you know, hit our, uh, our species. And that would be, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain. So, I mean, it's just starting up, but um, look at all these people who put in 20, you know, $200, $300 back in the day and are millionaires now. And, um, you know, that right there is just people staying ahead of the curve, keeping themselves informed, paying attention and, you know, taking the risk. And I think nowadays, especially with seeing just how many different bubbles are opening up, and I'm not calling a you know, blockchain a bubble, uh, that was the wrong word, but how many different uh, technological avenues that are opening up that you can explore that are 
you know, extremely profitable. Um, nowadays, it's really lucrative for the everyday person to stay uh, very vigilant when um, looking at technology because with each and every innovation that's coming out, there's more and more money-making opportunities. I mean, like I said, there was blockchain cryptocurrency. You've got uh, AIs right now that need help uh, getting uh, information and propagation, and companies are paying for that. I mean, and eventually the AIs will pay you. Exactly. So with all of these advancements, it's smart to keep uh, keep an eye open because. There's money making opportunities, and honestly, just also the ability to just to stay informed so you don't get left behind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Turn off the fear porn, and uh, I'm not saying entirely fear porn is useful to a certain degree. You want to be aware of what's going on, even politically and otherwise. But, 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 but don't live in it. There's a whole other world out there. And yeah, at iState.tv. I don't know if I've said that recently. <laughs> no. Uh, by the way, Not if you want to... I didn't... I had, I... <laughs> okay, good. And, it, and you can see a lot of stuff at a glance, like more than just the iState stories. If you go to wirewatch.news, it's iState stories on the top, and, and I also call and, and put in a whole bunch of other tons and tons of links to other sites as well. And you get a, a good overview of... Of what's going on, uh, I like to say it's, uh, well, actually the slogan for wirewatch.news is uh, headlines at a glance for the self-reliant. And that's that's what it's for. It's for people who are moving towards self-reliance. What are the tools? What are the things I should be paying attention to? Uh, that's where it's at. And a little bit of fear porn and a whole lot of tech and, and other stuff. They're, yeah, it's good stuff. All right. So we're going to wrap this show up. I thank you. Matthew, you're going to kind of be like a regular third, like, uh, like uh, fill in. And, and sometimes I'll have you on for like three people as well. Right. So you'll see more of Matthew on, on, on the is daily shows, the, the Tuesday through Thursday is daily shows. Yes. Keeping him away from the guns. We don't trust him. And then Friday you have your own gig, right? Yeah, Friday, actually, uh, I have uh, myself and Niz, uh, who you do he, programs with. and On this one. Are very familiar <laughs> right with. here, yes. Uh, this show, yes, yes, who I'm filling in with right yep. now, or for right now. Uh, him and I come together on Friday on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM, on, or at 10 p.m. on, or 10 p.m. on Fridays. Uh, where we cover a lot of what we've been talking about tonight. We're very much uh, tech, uh, you know, what's going on with, uh, you know, how that is affecting not only politics inside of the United States, but also around the world. Uh, And, you know, just basically anything that is uh, catching our interest in that realm. So if you want to go ahead and uh, check us out, we definitely – we definitely are going to be, uh, you know, having Paul, Bodie, and Niz uh, over with us as well. Yeah, yep. uh, uh, Paul's done a couple episodes with me, uh, and 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 Niz, with Niz. So, yep. um, I very much appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, come on tonight and do yeah. the show with you. Yeah, it was fun. It's good. Yeah, and uh, Larry said Absolutely. more of Matthew. Why? Yeah, Larry's a horrible human being. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, Larry, at any time, I mean, if you want to, uh, you know, jump on and, and then start doing oh, some programming gosh. and helping us out here. Yeah, dude, dude, if, if you don't like the way we're doing it. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you don't like the we way we're doing it. We would love to have, uh, you know, Statist Avenue uh, hosted oh. by Larry Cousins. Larry Cousins, he's my, he is actually, I don't know if you know this, but he's actually the villain he is the arch nemesis of all of the Is Daily shows. It's like is Larry oh. Cousins versus the Is Daily shows. That's pretty much how it's set up. So, uh, yeah, <sighs> this is not fake wrestling though. This is real, folks. This is real. Larry's still, a real person. I would still love. I would watch. I would watch any program by Larry though. Me too. I mean, it's totally. gotta be top quality. It's gotta be with top as shelf. Much, with as much criticism as he's got. He's got to put on one hell of a performance. I know. Yes, absolutely. I want to see that show. Oh, Larry, if you start doing shows, I will be listening to you every bit as much as you listen to me. 
I will be mm-hmm. a, your loyal listener, and I'll be there. I'll be there to comment. It'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be positive. Well, from my perspective. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us here for this is the Lozilla Mystery Theater. Oh, no, no, this, that's just yesterday. I'm getting confused. This is, this is News 5. Yeah. News 5. Yeah. That's the name of the show. News 5. Yeah, where we set your news on fire. Uh, uh, tomorrow, I will be back on my uh, personal Facebook page with headlines you may have missed. Where I cover headlines that you may have missed at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow night, it's the last show of the week for the Is Daily shows. But it's the first time that Lou Sander will be back after the hiatus. And the new title of the show on Thursday is uh, Leash Me Alone. That's the name of the show tomorrow. Leash Me Alone. Leash Me Alone, where we take you through the three stages of leash. The first stage is the shorter leash. Second stage is the longer leash. And the third stage is off the leash. We do that. All right. Uh, We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow and tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. And, Matthew, you'll be back again soon, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Matthew Taylor of uh, Torchwood Report, for joining us. You guys have a great rest of your day. Good night, everybody. Yes, I know, OBS. You're disconnected. You should be disconnected.